Hello and welcome to the Johnny Gets Cash YouTube channel where I buy, fix and sell cars for profit. Today you're joining me in my latest purchase, an infamous 90s British Roadster, the MGF. Let me start by addressing the elephant in the room. Yes, I have bought a drop top roadster at the end of the summer season, just as the weather is getting colder, grayer, and the nights are drawing in. But no, I haven't lost my marbles. I've got a plan. As you might expect, I wasn't actively looking for a roadster when I bought this car. However, as it was just down the road from me, and on paper it sounded like it could be a good option, I thought I'd better go and have a look. And to be honest, what greeted me behind closed garage doors was something else and I had to buy it I couldn't walk away it was just far too good to walk away from this is a late 2001 car and as you may know the MGF was produced between 1995 and 2002 before the later generation TF took over now although this is a 2001 car it's actually sporting a later 2003 registration the reason for that is the original owner when he first bought it he was in the military and he took it abroad with him and it wasn't registered until his return in 2003 meaning that this MGF with a 2003 registration on it is potentially the latest registered F in the world but that is not what attracted me to this little red beauty when I say that this car has been fastidiously maintained I mean it I rarely come across cars that have been as well looked after as this one for example I have got over £12,000 worth of maintenance receipts for this car as well as a fully stamped service book. It has been enthusiast owned since day one. It has been in a garage its whole life and it is in perfect condition. Now the only thing I think I've got to do at the moment is you may hear a slight squeak and that's because there is dry bushes on this car. Now the bushes have been replaced but also it didn't get a lot of use, it's been in a garage, the bushes have dried out. That's something I need to sort out but that's really really not a problem. So as I said, when I first put eyes on this car, although I wasn't in the market for a roadster at the time, I knew I had to buy it. It was simply too good to let slip away. Good cars don't come up very often, and when they do, you can tell the right ones, and this, is, this, is, this car is right, so I had to buy it. My plan is to hold on to this car until next spring or summer. Now the car doesn't want for anything, it's got an absolutely outstanding service file with it. Everything it's ever needed is had, and it doesn't need anything. However, I'm going to spend a bit of time over the winter, I think, going through the car just to be absolutely certain that there's nothing I can do to make this one a little bit better. So if you're like me and you can remember the 90s, no doubt you will remember these things being absolutely everywhere once upon a time. They were very, very common cars. And as a, as a result of that, they ended up becoming the go-to cheap, run it into the ground until it's broken convertible. And there were a lot of rough ones. However, times have changed. There are very few of these left on the road. And as an illustration, in the last five years, the numbers of these MGFs left on the road has more than halved. So that means, as of right now, there's a little bit more than 2,000 of these left on the road. So by that reckoning, if I wait till next spring slash summer to sell this, there'll be even less on the road. However, values are creeping up and collectors are starting to look for these things now and I think having one of the best as I believe this is having one of the best is definitely a good position to be in so tying up a few grand over the winter really isn't too much of a problem now almost certainly if you mention that you own an MGF you're going to be confronted with questions about the head gasket has it gone has it been replaced blah 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 it's true, the K-series engine that's in this car is famed for head gasket issues. Now, the reason for that, I'm led to believe, is due to inefficient cooling from the rad to the engine due to the long runs of coolant pipe. Now, this particular car, not only has it had the head gasket work done, so it's a skimmed head, new gasket, all the bits it needed, it's had an upgraded and improved cooling system fitted. So, stainless steel pipes, everything. So, not only has the problem been fixed, it will never come back. That's just one thing I liked about this car. The other issue with these cars is all to do with that hydroelastic suspension. Now, I'm told that when this system fails, and it does fail, the car will sit on its wheels, making it not only undrivable but unrecoverable. A bit of a nightmare, I'm sure you'll agree. This particular car has had, at great expense, a coil suspension system fitted to it, so a traditional setup. Now, all of that is completely invisible when you look at the car quickly, but it means this example is one of the better ones because all the bits that people might have to worry about being completely removed from the system.
Of course it rides quite firm, but then again, it's a sports car. You kind of expect that. So I don't think that's gonna put anyone off too badly when I come to sell it. Now you can probably hear as I'm driving this, a few little rattles, but at the end of the day, it's a 90s MG. There's gonna be a few little noises. One saving grace on the noise front though, this car, and I did say it was enthusiast owned, has had a stainless exhaust system fitted. And that exhaust sounds absolutely perfect. So whereas there are a few squeaks and rattles, as you'd expect, this sounds like the quintessential British Roadster. That stainless exhaust really brings something to the party. It sounds exactly right. So let's summarize. I have bought what I think is one of the better examples of an MGF, a car that in my opinion is on the up in value. Now I've said my plan, hold on to it for the winter, make sure it's as good as it can be by going through the whole thing. I don't think it's gonna need very much, but of course we never know. If I hold on to it till next spring or summer, I've got a feeling that I will look at the values then and I'll see that they're creeping again and I may be tempted to keep this a little bit longer term. However, I'll be interested to hear your opinion on it. As always, I do appreciate what you guys think about the cars I buy. I like hearing your stories about the cars you've had that are similar. So let me know in the comments if you think this is one that I should try and get rid of quickly. Should I hold on to it the spring slash summer or is it a long termer? Now I should tell you, I haven't gone into exactly what I paid for this thing because I didn't exactly get it for a steal. I paid, I think, fair money for the car. The previous owner was a good guy, he looked after the car and I think he deserved a good price for it. So I didn't steal it off him, I paid good money for it. But I do honestly believe these cars are on the up and good ones like this, which are hard to come by, they're only gonna get worth more and more because as I mentioned, people who collect cars, classic car owners, not every classic car has to be 25, 30, 40, 50,000 pounds. Classic cars can be accessible, why not? This car at sub 5,000 pounds would represent good value for someone, I think. Now, I believe in the next five or 10 years, when there's even less of these on the roads, the values of these are really gonna rocket. So I think anyone who buys it anytime soon, it's gonna be a bit of a prospector. So then guys, there it is. That is the MGF that I've bought. As I said, it's an absolute beauty. The amount of money that's been spent on this car and the, the level of care that it's received is just something else. I wasn't in the market for one, as I said, but it's just such a cracking example. I had to have it. I couldn't say no. If, if someone else had bought this, I would have been gutted. So yes, amazing car, potentially the wrong time of year, but you've heard my plan. I'm gonna hold on to it for at least the winter, maybe longer, who knows? We will see, nothing is set in stone, but um, I hope you've enjoyed it, seeing something a little bit different, certainly something different for this channel anyway. But uh, I'll be very, very interested to hear what you guys think of this car and my plans for it. So uh, yeah, I look forward to interacting with you in the comments. But as always, thank you ever so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.